All right, so hello everyone, welcome. Um, today we have a special guest, we have Tariq. Um, I, I know I saw Tariq Fiasco um, mm -hmm. as your Instagram name, so mm -hmm. I'm guessing, I'll just refer to you as Tariq today. Okay. But it's really a nice to like have a fellow Jamaican who travels a lot. I actually went on your Instagram account yesterday and saw some of the things that you were doing on it. And I started to kind of steal some of your 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 ideas and trying to adapt <laughs> it to mine. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, I would I would love to hear your story though. Like what um you were kind of telling me just now a little bit about your background, um, mm -hmm. about growing up. So I want to start from there before I get to the travel stuff. Right. Uh, because, you know, tell, tell, tell me, tell us, uh, like, how, where you grew up and, you know, um, about your, your uh, Jamaican background. Okay. Well, I was born in Houston, Texas, by parents who come from St. James, Jamaica. But I didn't grow up in, in Texas. So when my parents split, my mother took me to go stay in, in Miami. And, but throughout my life, I was living in different cities. I was living in North Miami, North Miami Beach. Um, at one point in time, I was living in Jamaica. Um, I was living in Broward. So I was doing, I was moving around a lot. Okay. But um, yeah, so. <laughs> so, so. So it kind of started out pretty early. I mean, you lived in many different places, so you're mm -hmm. going around a lot. Yeah, right, right. How long did you live in Jamaica for? You know, because it, it was it was very brief because it was on a yearly basis. I would stay there for a couple months and then come back and then go back for a couple months. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you mostly like kind of spent um holidays type thing there yeah yeah so yeah sort of sort of cool. but there was a time where i was i was there for months yeah i remember i remember that it was it was back in 1998 i was like 11 years old i was there for months and staying there for months i was able to speak patwa i don't know i wasn't even trying to speak patwa because i thought it was a weird dialect so <laughs> it just started coming out yeah. and then when i got back to the states People thought I was actually born in Jamaica because it just came out naturally. I wasn't even trying to put on an accent. Yeah, you kind of sound like you have a bit of an accent. <laughs> so I, I find it interesting that you, um, you're born in Houston. But yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what's funny? A lot of people say that because J Jamaicans don't really go to Texas when they, when they migrate. And they usually go to New York, uh, Florida, Connecticut. You know, maybe Boston, but not Houston or Alabama or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of odd for Jamaican to go to those states. Well, that's changing because to, I have some, some relatives that live in, um, in Houston now. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's, I, I know that's kind of changing. But what part of Jamaica was that that you, 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 you lived in? That you oh, lived that, in? Was, that was in Montego Bay. Montego Bay, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And... You know, so what I, I noticed from, you know, following you on, on, on YouTube, your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. like you have been to quite a, well, on Instagram, it shows you have been to quite a few countries, but I yeah. noticed you, you, um, you know, you have some stuff about Paraguay, which to be honest with you, that's the way I found you because like, I have always been interested to go to Paraguay. You know, it's not a country that's on the top of the list for a lot of people to visit, but I've always been curious about going there. So before we get into that, what even got you into like wanting to travel as much as you have? Well, I've always been a person who's interested in countries that's not on most people's radar. I like going to countries where people don't really talk about. Because, you know, people like, like to go to countries that's that's mostly popular like if if it's europe people like to go to paris so if it's south america people want to go to brazil or colombia yeah. or if it's in the caribbean they want to go to jamaica or the bahamas but i like going to places where people don't really talk about so yeah. like when i first went to europe i went to um copenhagen denmark yeah 
Yeah. No, not many people go out there. Yeah. So I went there. That's the first country I ever went to in Europe. Oh, okay. And even in the Caribbean, I went to Antigua and Barbuda. Um, I went to, uh, you know, to, to be honest, most of the countries I've been to in the Caribbean, I don't really remember much because my grandmother used to be a travel agent for Carnival Cruise Line. And that's how my traveling began, you know, it was, it was through going on the cruise and stopping at different islands like Jamaica, Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, Puerto Rico, you know. Gee. But when I went to South America, um, I decided that, you know, let me take a trip to go to Paraguay. No one talks about it. It's, it's mostly skipped over for, for Brazil and Colombia. It's, well, it's, it's different. I'm going to tell you that. I've been to seven Latin nations. This one is different. Yeah. It's natural. You don't see tourists. I mean, the people are friendly. It's, it's a beautiful country, even though it's poor, but I see the beauty in it. Okay. So you say, I want to get into that. So you say what got you into travel was, you know, your, your grandmother being a travel agent and you kind of going right. to those cruises, stopping. So, okay. And in terms of you now taking the step to go to Copenhagen, Denmark, like what, yeah. was, what was the thought process behind that? Why, why you did that? Well, you know, it's funny. I always want to go to Europe, but I wanted to go to Spain. But um, when I was working at the airport, somebody who was working for Spirit Airlines told me, you know what, take a trip to, to Copenhagen. You, you won't regret it. So I was like, oh, okay. So I booked a, a, book a flight to um, Copenhagen, went there, and wow, it's, it's different. Oh, okay. It's very different. Because um, I've never been to Europe. It's, it's more advanced. Mm -hmm. I noticed when I was in Copenhagen, a lot of people like to ride bicycles. Yeah. That is so popular. I don't know if you've, if you've ever been to Europe, but... Yeah, I've been to Germany. Yeah, I've been to a few European countries. Um, so I know about the, the, yeah, the, the bicycle thing. I know that they do that a lot in, I think, in Holland, too. I'm not sure. I went there, too. Yeah, you went there. Yeah, like they, they basically have their own bike lane, so you have to, like, step aside, because they, they were running over, like, like it was a car. So... <laughs> Yeah, the people over there, they were friendly. Like when I told them that I'm a Jamaican, they were like, Whoa, you you Jamaican? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like one guy, I remember I, I asked him if he can take a picture of me. It's actually in my Instagram. It's like if you go scroll all the way down, mm -hmm. there's, there's a picture of me like standing by the pole. He took a picture of me. In, and in he Denmark asked Denmark or Holland. No, this was in um Copenhagen, Denmark. Denmark, okay. Yeah, and um I was telling him that, you know, I'm from, I'm from America and my background Jamaican and all that. And I guess he liked the fact that I was of Jamaican descent. And mm -hmm. he said, you know what, let me, let me take it to my restaurant. I'll, I'll buy you something. Oh. Yeah, he was nice enough to buy me food at some restaurant that he worked at. Yeah, I had like shrimp and some other stuff. Like, while I was in Europe, I also went to Sweden and I went to England. Yeah, I've been to 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 England too. I've just not, I, I've never been to Scandinavia before. I want to go to Sweden is is on the top of my list, but I'd love to go to Denmark as well. Yeah, wait, wait. See, with Sweden, that was a bonus because I didn't know Sweden and Denmark were so close together like that. Yeah. Because when I went to uh, an, an Airbnb. I had a room, so this lady, she was the host. She was telling me, you know what? You can go to Sweden. Like, yeah? yeah? All you have to do is take a train. I took a train there, and she said, just bring, bring a passport. Okay. So it was, it was nice. I was there for like one day. <laughs> In Sweden? Yeah, just, for, yeah, just because the, the very next day, I had to go to England. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's cool, man. So you are... So you are you, you, you plan to like continue this type of life? Yeah, see, the thing is, um, last year I had planned on moving to Paraguay because when I went there in 2019, I was like, wow, this place is really nice. And I started having ideas like, you know what? I can have a restaurant here. I can, you know, find a wife and start a family. Like, I was just thinking things. And when the, when the pandemic hit, it, it just ruined everything. So um, 
I I still want to go to Paraguay. It's it's still on my mind every day. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm still keeping in touch with the people down there that I met while I was down there. And let me tell you, if you excuse me, how long were you there for? Maybe I was there for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. It's time. It's a nice long time. So let's just get into it since you since you start talking about it. I mean, Paraguay again, a lot of people don't talk about it. I mean, no, they don't. Of race or anything is like you don't find a lot of information. I had to scour the YouTube to find anything in depth on Paraguay. And I think you were mm -hmm. one of the most in-depth persons. So like what it, it was that the reason the reason why you wanted to go to Paraguay? Was it because like you kind of wanted to go to places where people don't talk about it? I, I heard you said that earlier. Yes, that and the fact that Paraguay is, is very mysterious. You know, it's, it's a mysterious country. Like you won't know anything about Paraguay until you until you go there. Yeah, you can read about Paraguay, but there's not a lot of information about Paraguay until you go there and see the culture and you, and you interact with the people. Yeah. Yeah, because I call Paraguay the, the, the North Korea of South America because yeah. people don't really go there like that. Like who goes to North Korea, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so. And what was, talk about your experience there. Like, you know, it sounded like you really enjoyed it there because you just said, you were even thinking about moving there. So there mm -hmm. must have been a, quite a few things that, you know, made you want to do something like that. So what, what was the experience like? Well, I like the fact that Paraguay is very cheap. It's very affordable. Like everything that you can think of is affordable. Like you can get a big plate of food for less than $6. Like up here in America, that's, that's a lunch menu between 12 to 3 o'clock. Yeah. Right, but down there, six dollars is kind of expensive. It's kind of expensive for for Paraguayans because they don't make it. They don't make enough money. Right. Like the average Paraguayan, there is like on a monthly. I think a monthly salary is like five hundred US. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, bless you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so it's very affordable. Taxi is affordable. Uber, um, rent. Like you get a big place down there for like 300 US a month in a nice neighborhood. Okay. If you bring that US dollar or you bring that, that English pound to, to Paraguay, you live like a king. Wow. But the thing is, it's it, because it's, it, it's a poor country, you know? It's not up there with Brazil, Argentina. Mm. And, um, but I don't really care because I, I like I like the country. It's very hot down there. It's very hot, is it? Very hot. <laughs> yeah, than it's close to the equator, right? Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's a cheap country is good. Um, you know, to me, I've been to Mexico before, and um, my comparison that I make to Paraguay, from what I've seen, because I've never been to Paraguay, is Mexico. Because Mexico, the cost of living there is very cheap. Um, you pretty much, you know, if if you have like a thousand US dollars a month, if you can make that, you could you could live pretty well in Mexico. You know, yeah. um, so I'm kind of assuming it's kind of the same thing um, in Paraguay. Yes, but but Paraguay is more cheaper. It's cheaper than Mexico. Cheaper than Mexico. Oh, okay. But there are even in Mexico, there's certain parts in Mexico that would match the the um the standard of living in the u.s like um that place called tulum i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right yeah Tulum. that's expensive yeah you know mm -hmm. but the 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 capital of, of paraguay asocion mm -hmm. is cheap cheap very cheap yeah but but people who live in paraguay would say otherwise no it's, it's expensive but for someone from an outsider going there like wow it's cheap you know so um so so what about what about the the um you know a lot of people are skeptical about south south america um especially you know black black americans or black people you mm -hmm. know i'm pretty sure one of the questions people would want to ask what was your experience down there like as a as a black person you know being black <laughs> in paraguay what <laughs> did you face any discrimination was it weird with anybody what was that like 
All right, you know what's funny? It's, it's a, that's a good question because when I was in Denmark, um, you know, Denmark don't really have much black people and, and I wasn't getting any stares. But when I was in Paraguay, another country where there's not a lot of black people, I got a lot of stares. I mean, a lot. Especially when I went to other cities, they, they were really looking at me like I was an alien. Like, I went to this city named Aragua. It's a small city in, in Paraguay. They're known for their strawberries. If you watch one of my videos, I was with this girl. She's from there. Right. Mm -hmm. I went on the bus, right? And before we got off, there was a little kid. He was pointing at me, telling, Mommy, look. Because he, he never seen a black person. And I thought, I thought it was nice. I, I mean, I thought it was funny that he was pointing at me. But while I was walking down Aragua, people were just looking at me like, who is this guy? Yeah. Because see, they don't get a lot of foreigners, let alone black foreigners. But the thing with Paraguayan people, they don't care how you look. They, they're going to embrace you. Okay. And that's what I like about Paraguay. They, they, don't, they don't look at skin color. They, they're more focused on character. So the so, stairs you were getting was more stairs based on curiosity as opposed to anything else. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, they don't get, I mean, black people in Paraguay make up like 1% of the population or 2% of the population. It's really small. Oh, so there mm -hmm. are black Paraguayans, but just oh, not. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just not a lot. It's just tiny. When you compare it to like Brazil, Colombia, and Guyana, you know. It's, it's a small amount. And they're friendly. They they're so nice. They're really friendly. And, yeah. And 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 you know what was that like? Since you do you speak the language? Do you speak Spanish? Um, you know, I thought I spoke Spanish till I went down there. <laughs> Man, it, it just lets me know that I need more work done on on speaking Spanish. Here's the thing: Paraguay is the only bilingual country in in South America because they speak another another language name. Um. Guarani. 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 It's a it's an indigenous language. It's also spoken in northern the northern part of of Argentina, and it's spoken on the western part of of Brazil. Right. It's a it's a native language, but it's a predominant language in Paraguay, and it's actually the official language. And when you're driving down the street, you see these signs. You see it in Spanish, and you also see it in Guarani. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Guarani is their mother tongue, but Spanish is more of a formal way of speaking, especially in, in, in Asuncion. But once you leave Asuncion, you hear more Guarani. That's their language. So that means in Paraguay is, would you say it's mostly indigenous people there? Um, it's mostly mestizo. The indigenous only make up 1%. One percent. But it's funny how... It's funny how the 1% of the indigenous people, they speak the language, but everybody speaks it, but they're not indigenous. Yeah. They speak in their language. And it's taught in schools, it's taught in everyday life. But it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. but the younger generation, they don't really speak it fluently. They, they mix it up. They call it um, cho, cho, chopara or another J silent. I think it's your your father. It's like a Creole mix between Spanish and Guarani. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So it's a mix. Mix. <laughs> you hear the rain? Sorry, it's raining right now. Okay, no problem. Um. So, do does anyone there speak English? Is, is English widely spoken or spoken at all? You know something? No, because again, because people don't really go there. They don't really invest in a country like that. And it's, you won't really hear much English unless you go to the hotel or you go to one of them hostels. They speak English, but outside of that, mm -mm, they, they don't, it's not a tourist attraction. So you're not going to find Paraguayans speaking English. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I guess if someone really want to immerse themselves in the learning Spanish, that would be a good place to go. You know, when, when I went to Mexico, I knew very little Spanish, but by the second time I went back, I could communicate 
you know, pretty well. But I did try and study on my own too. You yeah. Know? So by the time I went back, the second time was at least conversational. Mm-hmm. So, but that that would be a good challenge, I think. You know, to, to especially since the people are friendly and and they are they are you know um, open to you know helping you um, with mm-hmm. anything. I, I guess that would be a, be a good place to to visit. And I I just wanted to visit there because of the curious the curiosity that I have of Paraguay right. and actually um, you know some forums that I read and hear people who talked about going there. Yeah. Uh, then seeing your your uh, your videos as well. Um, but but where where else did you go? Did you were you mostly in Asuncion? And how how easy was it to meet people? To meet people, um, all right. You mean like meeting people in in the, in the hostels or just in, meet just in general, like anywhere, like meeting Paraguayans or making friends with them? Well, first. <laughs> You know, like like most guys do. You know, we use you know these dating apps. I was using Tinder, mm-hmm. and um, it, it actually made it easy for me to go to Paraguay and meet people. That's how I met that girl. That's in, that's in my video. I met her on Tinder, and you know, thank God for her. She she spoke a little English, and because of her, I was able to meet other people. And she took me to different cities throughout Paraguay. So she made my trip easier because I thought I spoke Spanish until I got there and she made my trip very easy. If it weren't for her, I don't, I don't think I would have enjoyed Paraguay as much. That's good, good. Yeah. So, so she, she took me to like, excuse me? No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, she took me to various cities. She took me to um, her city, Aragua. Uh, she took me to this place named um, Fernanda de la Mora. She took me to the small town in Emboscada. That's where all the black people live. It's a small town, like 80% black. She took me to uh, Sedad del Este. That's on the eastern part of Paraguay. Uh, that's where, where uh, a lot of Brazilians go to, to buy electronics, like cell phones, a, a PlayStation 5, and they go back home. Because it's, it's, it's very cheap over there. You know, Brazil is kind of expensive with, when, it, when it comes to electronics. Yeah. So, um, she, we went there, but I didn't get a chance to enjoy said that the less because when we got there, I got sick, like real bad. Oh, I got, man. yeah, I was really sick. I don't know what I caught over there, but I had to be in bedrooms for like two or three days. Oh, was it told me you ate or you're not sure? Um, you know, I, I really don't know, but it, uh, it was, it was real bad, but she bought medicine and yeah, she nursed me back to health. <laughs> so, like, after two days, I was a little bit better. And that's when we went to Brazil because we, we crossed the border and we went to this place. I don't know if you've ever been there called the Iguazo Falls. I've heard of it, but I've never been there. It's, it's like the, it's like the um, Narago Falls of, of New York. And we were, okay. but it's huge. Oh, yeah. Wow. I did see that online. Yeah. Yeah. But originally, we had plans to go through Argentina to see the um, Iguazo Falls, but it was a little further out, so we ended up going to Brazil instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it sounded like she, 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 she took pretty good care of you. Um, would mm-hmm. you say that that's generally the attitude of most women, most girls in, in um, Paraguay, especially to someone, a black person? <laughs> I, I think so too, because. Um, when I was in Colombia, I, I was dating a girl out there and and we went to Medellin. Like she's from Cartagena. Mm-hmm. And then we went together to, to Medellin. And back back then I didn't know a word of Spanish. She and she helped me out and she made my trip good too. Mm-hmm. So I think with the Latin thing, because they really go out their way to you know, like if they like you, they like you. And they they go stick by you, even if you're just a foreigner for, for a couple days or weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but she, this girl, the, the one in Paraguay, she, she um, lost some money. Like, I mean, she had other people cover her, her shift because she's a dancer. She's a, a salsa dancer. Okay. And she spent days to be with me, a stranger. Oh, really? she, You know? So, so she, she, she 
took took off work to spend the time with you. Right, right. Okay. That's because by that time she was she she was liking me, and so you know with, with Latin men, with Latin women they they did different. You know they they fall for you. Mm -hmm. They're different. Something you don't really get up here in in the U.S. Okay. And and uh, uh, what what are some of the differences you found with your experience with her that is different from here? Oh, she she was more caring, but that's more. Uh, you see, that's the thing with, with Paraguayan people, Paraguayan women. They do they're, they're more traditional, and and you know they they, they look out for you, as as what she did for me. So. Um, yeah, I mean, Paraguayans are, are different. See, you know, you won't find videos about Paraguayan women. I might have to make a video about that. Yeah, about Paraguay. you yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people would love to hear, you know, like kind of expand on it. Yeah, because I see people make videos about Brazilian women, Colombian women, Dominican, but you don't hear no videos about Paraguayan. And I'm the only one on YouTube who actually went there, and I haven't yeah. made them. Yeah, that's, that's a good little niche that you could, you know, exploit. And you know, if if especially going back there, if you go back there, you know, um, yeah, definitely, you know, some more, you do some, you know, some more, like you know, some yeah. more CMR, even things that we haven't you haven't done before. Uh huh. You know, I'm planning to go down there. I don't know when, but you mm -hmm. know, definitely something that's on my list. Of yeah. Places. So for the record, they they love black people. I just want to put that out there right now. They love black people. Love black people. You know, because yeah. yeah, go ahead. In, in all right, you're in Brazil right now, right? No, I'm I'm in I'm in the U.S. now. Oh, okay. See, in, in Brazil, they, they they used to you because it's a lot of black people in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a country like Paraguay, then you're you're celebrated because they're not you're something that they don't see every day. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you if you ever go to Paraguay, you will get embraced by people, especially women. It's very easy for you to get dates because you're not something that they see every day. You're like a you're like a piece of chocolate to them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll 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 attract them just but by you know, just by your presence there. Yes, yes. They like foreigners, especially black foreigners. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the 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 the, the other things that um, you think people should want to visit Paraguay to experience? W what about it? You know, you said the people are are very friendly, especially mm -hmm. if you're black. You know, that might be a, a plus. You know, so a lot of people sometimes think that being, you know, being black, there people are not going to treat you well. For, 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 you know, because of that alone. Right. It's not always true at all. Sometimes it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know? But but what are some of the other things are, you know, things that you experience that you'd say, hey, you, 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 you want to, this is a good place to come and visit? Well, keep your options open. I mean, don't go to the same countries over and over again, because that's what I noticed on YouTube. Like these guys, they keep going to Brazil, Colombia, Dominican Republic. They keep going to the same countries, but they're not broadening their horizons by going to Paraguay or going to Bolivia or going to Chile. Try something different. Like I can't see myself eating chicken every single day. I mean, every now and then I want to try something different like a steak or maybe lasagna. Try something different. Yeah. You know, like you can always go to Dominican Republic, but... Why not go to Guyana? Why not go to Saint Saint Kitts and Nevis? Yeah. You know, You're so right. like like I, I have plans on going back to um, South America, but I want to go to Suriname. Right now it's closed because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. but when they open, I want to go there. I want to go to Bolivia. They're open right now, mm -hmm. but the way I, the way I want to do it is I want to fly into Paraguay, and then work my way to to Bolivia. That's cool. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Another place in South America where I don't hear a lot. Well, people talk about it, but not not a lot of black people. I hear. I, I see going to Peru. You know, there are a few people who go, but yeah, yeah. but it's kind of still kind of untapped. Do, have you any experience with Peru? 
<laughs> no, I've never been to Peru. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm but, gonna I'm going there um soon, you know, because you know it's it's I, I kind of see it how you're saying like we kind of tend to go to the same places. We talk about going to right. Brazil and Colombia and you know the DR and mm-hmm. those are pretty much mostly all the places you know um, yeah. we go. But you're right, we should kind of expand it and just kind of you know go to countries in the entire South America, the entire continent, you know, Mm -hmm. I would love to go down to Argentina too. I was going to, when I was in Brazil, I was thinking of going to Uruguay, but they were closed. Yeah. Yeah. I read about that too. You know, so it's, that's, that's the reason. So I'm just kind of looking to see what countries are opening up and, you know, because, you know, I'm going to, (laughs) going to be making a few moves myself. So, yeah, that, that's good because you see, it's it's good to expand to other countries that, that haven't been explored. And, and that way you can make a review and maybe you can get one of your subscribers to want to go there as well. Yeah. Because when I went to Paraguay, I actually influenced my subscribers to want to go there. Like they, they would send me messages mm-hmm. via email saying, you know, because of you, I, I want to go to Paraguay now. Mm-hmm. And I want to check it out because they, they never thought about that country. Mm-hmm. So, it, it makes it, it makes me feel good that I inspired somebody to want to go to a country that that has that's been skipped over for other countries like Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, etc. Mm-hmm. But I would like to go to Uruguay. I would like to go to you know I want to, I want to go to every country in South America. Mm-hmm. You know, like Guyana, Suriname, it's French Guyana. You know, Chile. You know this. I'm right there with you too, man. Yeah. Suriname is 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 not even a country. People think about that. That's a Dutch country. That's a Dutch yeah. country. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely something a lot of people don't even take into consideration. That's a that's a country in South America where the language is actually not Spanish or, um, or Portuguese. Portuguese, which is the the language is most spoken on the continent. But you also have French Guyana too. Mm-hmm. That's another country, um, not yeah. a speaking country, um, on on the South American continent. So you're right. I mean, yeah. it's definitely um, something we should take into consideration. And and technically, French Guiana is not is not a independent nation because they're still part of France. Right. So so they're technically French citizens, mm-hmm. and, and they have a French passport. So if anything, they can go to France if they, if they want to. Yeah. I mean, that's more opportunities for them. They still have the, the the French flag too, if I'm not mistaken. Or do they? Um, have the French flag? I, I, you know, that's a good question. I, I don't know, but but I know that they're French. Um, they're, they're French citizens, like like um Guadeloupe and mm-hmm. and Martinique, mm-hmm. you know. So they can just hop and move to to France if they want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but the Dutch speaking country, um, Suriname, they're the only independent Dutch country in the Americas. Because if you notice, know, Aruba, Curaçao, Barnier, Saint Martin, they're still under the Dutch, under which makes them Dutch citizens. Okay. But but Suriname, the, you, you, like like Paraguay, you don't really hear people talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait for that country to open so I can just fly down there and and absorb the culture. And what 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 made you want to even think about visiting Suriname? Same thing with Paraguay. No one talks about it. No one talks about it. So you pretty much look for the countries that no one talk about, and that's the one I want to go. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> smart, though, you know, because um, there's not a lot of information. Uh, again, with, with Paraguay, I think you have the most extensive in, um, information or set of information on YouTube about Paraguay. Yeah. And, you know, those are the countries, too. You know, the, the Surinams, the French Guyanas, you know, it, you know, just talking, no, it just made me think, wow, it's not only Spanish and Portuguese is spoken in South America. There's there's way right. more to it. And those countries are big countries too. Guyana is a, is a pretty big country. It's yeah. not as big as Brazil, but it's still, you know, it's still a large country. Yeah, that's another country I want to go to, Georgetown. Georgetown, Guyana, yeah. Yeah, and what I like is that both Suriname and Guyana are part of the, the CARICOM. Right, so they are oh. considered Caribbean countries. Yes, yes. So even though they are on the South American continent, 
Right, right. But I don't, I don't think they consider them themselves South American. I don't know if you know anything about that. Because I don't, they, I, I don't, I don't think they consider themselves that because Guyana, just being Jamaican, I know Guyana was a part of the, the, the West Indies cricket team, which is the Caribbean cricket team. So they yeah. consider themselves more Caribbean, even though they are they share a border with Brazil. Mm -hmm. Suriname, I know they play in the just from sports because I follow the sports there. In in soccer, they play in the Caribbean Cup. Caribbean tournament. Suriname plays in Caribbean tournament. So okay. when they're on the South American continent, they still participate with the Caribbean teams. Okay. I, I didn't know. Um, I don't really know much about sports in, in both those nations, but I always assume that soccer was the more popular sport, but from what you're telling me, it, cricket is more of a popular sport. Um, it depends on where you go. I would say in general, soccer is the most popular sport but there are certain but cricket is very popular as well you know mm -hmm. um you know you know it would be if i was to say percentage wise in the caribbean you know um soccer is 60 percent popular to cricket's 40 percent, something like that okay so it's like it's it's almost equal but soccer is a little bit more you know okay Okay, but but um once once that country open again I I can't wait to go and, and just experience everything and 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 another thing about have you tried Suriname food? Surinamese food no I've no no oh, their food is delicious um where I got have you tried it? excuse me where where have you tried it um in, in Amsterdam because you know Amsterdam is a bunch of Surin how you call them Surinamese. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, they, they're enough out there. There's a lot of them over there. Okay. And my friend, he he was born in, in the Netherlands, but his mom is from Suriname. But he looks white. Okay. So um, he he ordered some food, some Suriname food, and he had me try it out. And it's 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 a blend of because you know Suriname is is a blend of African, Chinese, East Indian, Indonesian. And the food I was eating, I don't remember the name, but it was so delicious. Okay. It was really good, man. And and I want to I want to try it again. I, I might have to ask him what what food it was the last time he ordered for me when I was out there. But there's no certain there's no certain restaurants in Miami and Brow counties. They they're not known to be out here like that. Okay, I thought there was where you got it because I know a lot of people live in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. So. You know what's funny? As, as diverse Miami and Fort Lauderdale is, there's certain groups you will not find. You won't find Paraguayans. You won't find people from Suriname. It, it's, yeah, it's weird. I don't know why, but, yeah. they, you know, there's no Paraguayan restaurant, but they do have a food truck in Miami. It's called 1811, because that's the, that's the um, year of their independence. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so they, I went, they get independence long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went there uh it was like two months ago mm -hmm. and I had um this thing called sopa. It's it, it it's supposed to be soup, but legend has it that the president at the time um he had a chef and she was making corn soup for him, but she put too much corn flour and then it got too thick and it became solid. So it became this this cornbread. <laughs> oh, really? So it's yeah, like, it, a, like a wet type of cornbread. Yeah, right. but it's it's more solid. But they call it soup, but it's not soup. It was supposed to be soup because originally it was supposed to be corn soup. It just got it just that the lady who was making it at that time added too many corn corn flour and it got thick. Okay. So, but it tastes good, man. It tastes really good. All right, let me tell you about, about the, the food that they serve in, in Paraguay. Mm -hmm. Paraguayan sopa is one of them. Mm -hmm. They have this soup called Vori Vori. It's spelled V-O-R-I, V-O-R-I. It's, it's basically chicken soup, and they have these little, um, these little balls in there. I think they're dumpling balls. Mm -hmm. I never tried it, but it looks good. Um, they have this thing called Cassava. Okay. Yeah, I know. Like they cassava and they eat it with barbecue. 
It tastes really good. Chicken? No, it's um they, they eat it in Brazil. I think in Brazil they call it another name, but it's basically the same thing. It's called um asado. Okay. It's like a big steak and it's it's known in Brazil too. I don't know if you've been to Sao Paulo. They're they're known for, for making that. Okay. Um yeah, I'm not sure. There is this um dish that I know they're um, known for, but it start with an M. I can't remember it right now. And it's it has um beef in it or they substitute it with pork. We have like beans and pork and some little dumpling things in it and yeah. Are you talking about the national dish for, for Brazil? Yeah. yeah. Oh, are you talking about? Oh, I know you're talking about. It's um, fushuada. Yes. yes. Yes, it was. It was um, from what I read, it came from the slaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like beans, pork, rice, and all types of stuff yeah. in it. Mixed yeah. up in this little bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I know about that. <laughs> A lot of Brazilian restaurants out here, but they're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> There's a place called Texas de Brazil. Oh, oh yeah. man. I, yeah, they have one up here too. As a matter of fact, they, they have this drink, this Brazilian drink, Caparena. Yes, yes. It's funny enough, um, Miami was the first time I had that drink. But when I went to Brazil, I had a lot of them. <laughs> you know? How many shots you had? <laughs> a lot. They put so much alcohol, they put so much uh, vodka in it. Like, yeah. they have the cup and they just dump a bunch of you know, mm -hmm. alcohol in it, then they, they they squeeze the lime in it. Yes. You know, I don't even think they use any, they, they might um, pour a little juice in it, but they don't put water in it. It's just vodka, um, lime. Yeah, lime, um, sugar. Sugar, and then they crush up all of that. And then if it's not full, they will top it off with a little lime juice. And yeah, it's it's pretty good. Well, there's different flavors of that, but I usually have the, the, the traditional one. So the first time I had Caprihina was in, um, my mother and I went to this Brazilian restaurant in um, Hollandale, no, was it? it was in Hollandale Beach. I don't remember the name of our restaurant. I'm not sure if they're still open, but we went there. It was my first time going to a Brazilian restaurant. I asked for Caprihina, the, the, the traditional drink. Mm -hmm. And they did what you just said, just not crushing it, they put ice and all that. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes good, but I was a little lightheaded because I had like what two shots. One of those alone will get you going, just mm -hmm. <laughs> because the yes. there's a lot of vodka in it. Like you know, so if you have like three of those, you you're good. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? In uh, in Paraguay, they got Brazilians living in in Paraguay, oh, so yeah. you will find Brazilian restaurants mm -hmm. and people in Brazil. Um, Brazilians living in Paraguay are referred to as Brasiguayos. 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 All Brazilian Paraguayans. Yeah, because the sheer border, right? Yes, it's called the um, the Friendship Bridge. You mm -hmm. can basically just cross over. You don't even have to show your passport or your or your ID. You can just walk over and oh. yeah, you can buy whatever over there because Paraguay is very cheap. Like I was telling you before. Yeah. Buy your PlayStation 5 and just cross back over. <laughs> buy your cell phone or whatever. Actually, now that you're, you talk about I went to this place called Belo Horizonte, which is in Minas Gerais in, in Brazil. Yeah, I know that. It's it, a lot of... It, 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 the, the population is very indigenous. There are a lot of indigenous people there. But there are really? A lot of black people there too and, and white people. But... I met this, when I got to the airport, the first person I met was a Paraguayan, this guy. And he was like trying to talk to me the whole time. He was pretty friendly, you know? He was like, oh, you, you, how are you like in Brazil? And he was heading back to, to Paraguay. Actually. Okay. So he was just kind of waiting on his flight, but it was pretty friendly. So it just kind of made me wonder if there are just as many Paraguayans in, in Brazil as it sounds like there are Brazilians in Paraguay. All right, I'll tell you this. You will find Paraguayans in Sao Paulo more than you would in Belo Horizonte. Okay. Because Sao Paulo is, is the financial capital and that's where people go to, to find work. Right. Even people from Brazil, like who live on the Northeast, like in Bahia or Fortaleza, mm -hmm. they fly, they, they go down there for work. So you'll find a lot of Bolivians, um, Paraguayans, and different groups of, of um, immigrants in, in, in um, Sao Paulo. 
but you find more Paraguayans in Argentina, mainly in Buenos Aires. Oh, okay. Yeah, because in Paraguay, there's, there's not a lot of opportunities. So they'd go to either Brazil or Argentina. Mm -hmm. I've only come across one Paraguayan here. When I went to a Mexican store, I met this, um, there was this Paraguayan girl there. She, mm -hmm. yeah, she, she and her Mexican boyfriend, I think it was, but. Oh, this was in Mexico? Huh? This was in Mexico or? No, in, in Pittsburgh here. Oh, Pittsburgh, okay. Yeah. It's, that's that's where I met her, but that's that's the only Paraguay I've ever come across outside of South America. I'll tell you a fun fact about Paraguayans. Out of all the Latinos who live in America, Paraguayans are the least traveled. They're the, they're the smallest group in 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 um in America. Small uh, South American group. Yeah, because they don't really, even though it's one of the poorest countries, they're the least traveled to to America. So you've probably seen every Latino there is, but Paraguayans, not so much. I've probably seen two in my life in, in, in America. I'm not surprised, you know, because you hardly hear anything about Paraguay. It's, yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and if you go to New York, <laughs> this, this is one place in New York called um, I Love Paraguay. It's the only Paraguayan restaurant in all of the United States. So you say you're in Pittsburgh, so you're not too far from New York. Yeah. But so if you want to get a taste of Paraguayan food and Paraguayan culture, you can go to that restaurant. New York City. Okay. In New York City. I'll, I'll check it out the next time I'm there, cause yeah, I go there. I wouldn't say often, but a good, you know, a good, a good amount of time. And that's my plan if I decide to go to New York. Cause there's no way I'm gonna go to New York and not go to a, go to that Paraguayan restaurant. <laughs> yeah. If you if you ever did move to Paraguay, it would be hard for you to live there. I mean, it sounds like you still want to explore a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, because um, like I said, I want to travel throughout Latin America, but Paraguay, I want it to be my main place to live mm. because of what I saw down there. Okay. Right, right. I can, I can basically open up a business in, in um, teaching children how to speak English, mm -hmm. and they and they're looking for English speaking teachers. Like, like, like before the pandemic hit last year, I was sending out my resume to different schools down there. And there was a lot of schools um, hitting me up saying that they want to come see me. Oh, really? Yeah, man. But when that pandemic hit, it just mushed up everything, man. And I was so upset because I really want to get out of this country and move down to Paraguay. Okay. Well, it's kind of, how is it down there now? Are they open? Because I, when I was going to Brazil, Funny enough, I never said this earlier. I actually, my plan was actually to spend, I spent three weeks in Brazil. I wanted to spend one of those weeks in Paraguay. And at the time they weren't open. So is it open now? Are they open for tourism or are they still shut down? They've been open since October of last year. Really? Yeah. And, and for anyone watching this. October of last year, they're open to, to tourism? All right, they, they've, been, they've been closed when, when the pandemic hit. They were closed in, in March, but okay. they had opened back in, in, in October. Really? Yeah. Like now, if you go, if you go on YouTube and you, and you type in Paraguay, you actually see people going to Paraguay. New, okay. I'm like brand new videos of, of, of people from the, from the U.S. and other parts of the world going to Paraguay. But now they have different requirements. See, when I went down there, I had to get a visa. It's called a visa on arrival. Yeah. And I had to get it at the airport. And here's the thing. When you get to the airport, you have to spend $160 to get the visa. And the money has to be in mint condition or else they won't take it. Yeah, so they, yeah. anyone watching this, make sure you, that the money that you have is in mint condition because they will not accept it. There was, a, there was a $20 bill that the guy didn't want to take because they had a little scrap. No, they had a little mark on there. They, you can't even see it. He was being nosy, looking at it. I said, no, nah, I can't take it. So I gave him another $20 bill. Oh and God. I got my visa. And that was that. But now, not only that you need your visa, you need to get a COVID test, of course. Mm -hmm. You had to get it um, within 72 hours. And you also need to get a travel insurance. 
That's very important. If you don't get that, then they won't let you in. Yeah. They won't let you in the country. Mm. Are you planning to travel anytime soon? Um, I plan on going to Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, I plan on leaving on the 19th. Okay. That's, that's yeah. pretty soon. Because <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to Jamaica since 2018. Okay. Yeah, I wanted, I was there in 2019. So, Kingston? Kingston, yeah. You know, when I first went to Kingston, I didn't like it. Yeah, Kingston, if you are not like, if you want, if people want to experience the, the parts of Jamaica that they see, like, you know, mostly on TV or on the internet or what, Montego Bay would be the place to go. But Kingston is different. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Kingston can be dangerous depending on where you go. Um, but that's kind of where per, I, I travel for different reasons. I, even though I'm a tourist in pretty much of a country I go to, yes, um, I, I, I like going to places where I can get a feel of what the country really is like, as opposed to you know, the touristy part. So like for me, going to Mexico, I'm not crazy about going to Tulum or um, Playa del Carmen or Cancun. Like those places don't, uh, you know, don't appeal to me because it's you being a tourist, you know, it's kind of you going to the beach and doing all the touristy stuff. I kind of prefer being where the, 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 the people are going to work and the, the, the mm -hmm. heartbeat of the country, you know? Um, that's what I want to experience. And maybe it's because I grew up in Jamaica, like the beach doesn't appeal to me that much. Maybe it's the same for you too, because, you know, um, if you're in Miami, if you, you grew up where you grew up, I mean, you're, you're, you're by the beach every day, you know? So, yeah, it's different because I see a lot of tourists come here, but I'm not much of a beach person unless I'm going to another country. Okay. But it's, it's something different. Like when I went to Brazil back in 2018, I went to... Um, Remember that place, Ip Ipanema. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went there. It was it was a little different because the women they <laughs> they show more skin, <laughs> yeah. a lot more skin. You know, you see I more. Really fit too. You're super. Yeah, yeah. You fit because they're out there playing volleyball. That's you don't see that in Miami playing volleyball like that. That's true. That's true. Yeah, That's true. it's a different thing. Because when I was in Rio, I did go to the beach a lot too. So. It's a different experience. You're right. Did you did you by any chance check out the favelas? I went to one. Yes, there was this one called Virigando. I went to this oh. Virigando is a little bit more uh, pacified, as they say. So it's not like there's this favela called Rosinia, um, which is more dangerous. A lot of people say, "Oh, don't go to." Don't go to that favela, you know. I heard about that place. Um, but people yeah. still go. People yeah, that's the place that Michael Jackson went to do his music video. Right, exactly. That's that's the one. Yeah, yeah. people people still go. I mean, if you if you if you can make friends with a with a local, yeah, and, you know, they can help. You know, they can go with you. I wouldn't go there by myself, based on how people were talking about it. I was like, okay, I'm not going. You know, but there was this one called Vidigando, which was cool, but even that one, when I was coming back, when I was hit, because I went to the, the very top, you know, most of the favelas are like on the, the, the mountain or on the hill. Yeah, yeah. So I went to a, a, a popular spot at the top of the, of the, um, of the, the hill uh, or the top of that uh, favela. And when I was coming back down, like we could hardly get through because the police was just all over the favela. Like it would, they were just all over. So, they were walking down with gun, like <laughs> you know, yeah, I thought that too. Guns coming down, so I was, I was like, "What happened?" You know. So the guy was telling me, you know, stuff like this happened all the time. But that's one of the pacified favelas, so I can just imagine what some of the others are like. Yeah, I, I was surprised to see that they have a lot of favelas in, in different cities throughout the, the whole country of Brazil, because not just in Rio, but you also find them in. In Sao Paulo, you find them in, in uh, Bahia, Fortaleza, Recife. Yeah. Like every city has a favela. Every city. I saw some in Belo Horizonte too. 
Let's see. You know? mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, is this a Brazilian <laughs> thing? Because I never expected that, you know? Yeah, like they even have one. I was shocked to even find this one out too. Because, you know, in southern Brazil, it's the most wealthy. And they got a, they, there's a favela in Florinopolis. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and Florinopolis, is, I think, is one of the, the kind of up, more upscale um, cities. I, I know Sao Paulo is the, the, you know, the financial capital, but outside of Sao Paulo, I think Flor- Florinopolis is, you know, kind of upscale like that. So. Mm-hmm. And I was shocked that they have favelas out there too. <laughs> but it's not, but I, I've seen photos of it. I'm like, mm, you know, it's not as bad as in Rio. Rio looked like more like a jungle. Oh yeah. Rio is like as, as you have been to Rio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when I compared, because I was in Sao Paulo for a week before I went to Rio. Okay. When I, when I went to Rio, I could just see and feel the difference. It's it's like, you're right, man, It's it, it feels, the, the beaches is what kind of makes it more, you know, appealing. But mm-hmm. like, it's definitely a, 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 a tougher place, you know, it's definitely a tougher city than, 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 uh, than Sao Paulo. All right, let me ask you this. Um, have you been to any uh, slums in, in Kingston? And, and if so, can you compare to the slums in Rio? And how they compare? That's a pretty good question. Um, yeah, I, I have been to quite a few slums in Kingston. I used to have a friend that I visit pretty much every twice a week. So I'm pretty familiar. Um, the difference I would say is the Jamaican slums are very, very harsh, you know? Um, they, they are similar from the perspective that um, the, it's kind of the same type of setup where you have people just creating their own settlements. And mm-hmm. then within that, um, you have, you know, shops and stores where you can buy what you need, you know, on a, on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the thing about the Brazilian favelas, though, I think it kind of seems a little bit more organized to me, even that's kind of weird to say, but they, 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 when I went into the Brazilian favela, I noticed that the, the, um, the shops and the stores that were there were actually like, um, functioning pretty well. You know what I mean? It's. It, it was on it was on a hill in the favela and everything, but like it, it just kind of seemed like somewhere where you could really sit down and have a a, a nice meal and mm-hmm. not be worried too much, or you could go and shop and not be worried too much. I don't know because uh, you know I, I've only been in those favelas for a few you know hours at best. Um, yeah. I, I even went to one in Colombia as well, and it's it's similar. Uh-oh. The ones in Brazil seem a little bit more dangerous to me than the ones in Colombia, but they're they're similar too. Yes, they're similar, but in, but in, in terms Jamaica, of... but in Jamaica, it's the violence in Jamaica that makes it different. You know? Oh, because okay. Jamaica is, you know, the the, the slums there. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be out and about too much. You know. And I'm pretty sure they will tell you the same thing in Brazil. I never felt that way when I was there, but like um, in Jamaica, if if I'm going into any of the slums, I'm going to somebody's house where I am not out in the open like that. You know yes. what I mean? Um, whereas in Brazil, I think you can get away with doing that a little bit more. You know, so it's it's very very similar. Um, but I think, as I said, there favelas are a little bit more organized and I think a little bit more safe to be honest but I'm pretty sure if you ask someone that lives there they will tell you something different so based on what you're saying it's 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 somewhat tourist friendly in in Rio in the slums tourist friendly because for you to just go there and have a drink and it's it sound like it sound tourist friendly to me yeah there's because the one that I went to there was a there was a on top of the, the, the favela, there is this very popular, I don't remember what the, 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 the place is called, but you have, a, you have a hotel there, literally a hotel on top of the favela, <laughs> right? 
And it's a nice hotel too. And they have this restaurant on top of the hotel. And then across the road from it, you have uh, a bar slash um, club, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, a, it, uh, maybe I should have posted that one, even though I never had a lot of footage on it. But in there, you had a lot. It, it, it's like, a, it's open like all day. It's, it's open like from maybe 10 o'clock in the morning till maybe three o'clock the next morning. So it's always, it's, and I went there during the day and it was still a big party going on there. And I noticed that a lot of the, it seems to me like a lot of the wealthier Brazilians that live in Rio were there. I didn't see any, I hardly saw any. All right, so in the, in the favela is mostly black people or you call it um, those are mixed race people that live there. I hardly saw, I didn't see any one like that there on top of the favela. So it was, mm -hmm. it, apparently it was one of these places where it's in the favela, but here's the, you know, the wealthier Brazilians come to or something. That's how it seemed anyway. That sounds very Brazilian because they always partying. Like I was staying at this, this, this hostel in Bucks. It's a, it's a party hostel. And that area, there's a lot of nightclubs. So every night I went to a, I went to a different nightclub and they're always partying. You, you don't even have to go to a nightclub. You can party outside the street. Mm -hmm. There's always a party in Lapa. Mm -hmm. Lapa. Lapa, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lapa is something else, man. Like, yeah. especially on a, fr I mean, I went there on a Wednesday night and it was popping. I went there on a Wednesday night and then I went back out there on a, I think it was a Friday or a Saturday night and it was crazy. It was so many people out there and people were telling me that that's not, that's, that's actually Lapa with less people because the time when I was down there was, it was during the, still the pandemic, even though to be honest in Rio, Mm -hmm. They they weren't it, there was no pandemic there. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it like that. I mean, people okay. were going about their business just like normal, pretty much. Were they wearing masks? Some people wore it, but it wasn't something that was enforced. I I didn't see that being enforced. Some people wore it. Some people, most people didn't. You know. So, but I I wore more most of the time unless i was at the beach then right you know, took it off but for the most part i had my mask but yeah in lapa is is crazy it's 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 probably one of the it's probably the best spot to go if you are a night if you want to experience a nightlife though mm -hmm. probably the best spot to go yeah that that's one of the reasons why i wanted to go because um i i've read so many nice things about it i mean it's it's not a rich area so you know you have to be careful when you when you walking out and about um you know there's, there's like beggars on the street but i didn't care i just want to you know immerse myself in the culture and, and get to know the people but i also went to different parts of, of rio i went to um copacabana i went to Ipanema, went to different hostels so i i was meeting new people along the way and you know to my surprise that the brazilians like jamaicans Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know when I was down there. Mm -hmm. So, so I got a little of um, how you say it? Um, is it celebrity? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like they they, they treat me. Oh, yeah, yeah, they treat me a little better. <laughs> I have a shirt with with Jamaica written across it like that, and I wore it when I was down there. There were people driving past and stopping. I was Jamaica. I was like blowing your <laughs> arm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I should have just wore that shirt all, you know, for the whole time I was there. <laughs> but yeah, my, my yeah, my, my first night I went to the I went to this nightclub. I don't I don't remember the name of it. And I had a Jamaican chain similar to this one right here, but it had the the the, the, the traditional colors of it on it, right? Yeah. One of the bouncers who had let me in, yeah, Jamaica man. <laughs> was doing that he saw my chain, I'm like, oh yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know if you know about this, but there's a city that plays nothing but reggae music in northern Brazil named Sao Luis. 
Yes, I heard about that. I heard about oh, the reggae capital of, of Brazil. Mm -hmm. I'm check it out one day. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would love to go there. The, the, the sad part about it is that I found out about it after I came back <laughs> from Brazil. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, I know about it now, though. I, I knew about it before I got there, but um, at, but at that time, it was, the, it was actually cheaper to go to Rio than to go up north. So I was focused more on Rio. And Brazil is big, too. One of the things I found out, Brazil is actually bigger than the contiguous U.S. So the lower 48, Brazil is bigger than that. So by landmass, it's... But if you add in Alaska, then the U.S. would be big, bigger. But no, right. no Puerto Rico, all of that. Brazil is actually bigger, which surprised me. Yeah, I, I always tell people that because um, they don't realize how, how big Brazil is, and I always tell people if you if you don't if you don't include Hawaii, Alaska, and the other territories part of the U.S., Brazil is much bigger. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I wanted to go to Manaus as well, which is like near the Amazon rainforest, but <laughs> I I not it. Mano, Mano. Manaus. So it's M A N A U S. Oh, oh, that's up. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's up north. When I was in Rio, I met a guy who was from there, but he spoke with a Guyanese accent. Because okay. when he when he found it out that I'm that I'm Jamaican, that's when he started speaking to me in it in the Creole dialect. Okay. Because he said his father is from Guyana, mm -hmm. but he was born in Brazil. So I'm starting to think maybe Guyanese live in that area too because they're not that far apart. Mm -hmm. Right. And plus there's Brazilians who live in Guyana as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it made sense. Definitely. Yeah. He, and plus he kind of passed for, for a Guyanese because he had that look to him. Like he looked kind of Indianish, mm -hmm. blackish. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, he, he told me he's from that place that you want, want to go to, Manaus. Okay. And there's a place I want to go to go in that same region called Berlin. Okay. It's like right next door. Okay. Berlin is, is a city in the state of um, Ara. Okay. That's, yeah. that's up north too, right? Yes, that's up north. That's where they have a lot of indigenous people. But it's very swampish out there. Mm. Yeah, but um, you know what? Even though I want to go out there, I, I'm afraid of snakes, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, they got them big old snakes out there, man. Yeah, my sister told me she has a um, a friend that she works with who is from Brazil who said that she had a, a friend that was eaten by a snake already. <gasps> yeah. Oh, so it, it definitely works. It definitely happens there. Uh, all right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream here, but we can we can we can still talk. I'm just gonna end the, 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 the recording. Not the problem. Definitely, thank you for you know sharing your experience with us, and hope we can maybe turn this into a a, a, a weekly podcast. We could talk travel, you know. Yeah, of course, no problem. Definitely. All right, so let me stop that. All right.